These fashions and embellishments will be hot for 2001. A lot of sarongs were designed for the beach scenes. We did the mix and match look like switching bikini pieces with tankini pieces. It was a cultural reset. It was a cultural reset. A youthful summertime aesthetic, the surf crush aesthetic, also known as the coconut girl, came about in the early 2000s and lasted until 2008. The coconut girl breathed a dose of fresh seaside air into the 2000s. And while I was hesitant to do this aesthetic, as its massive burst of popularity in 2021 led to a lot of coverage, I think there's still some things about this aesthetic that haven't been pointed out. For example, many modern interpretations of the coconut girl are selective in their focus on early 2000s summer trends. But the aesthetic actually covers mid 2000s summer trends as well, and there is often a distinguishable difference between these periods. I don't want to repeat myself too much, so I'm going to avoid talking about trends I've covered in other 2000s videos as much as possible, but they were a valuable part of this aesthetic and should be kept in mind. If they were summer appropriate in the 2000s, they were likely seen on the coconut girl. Think all the sunglasses trends, belly chains, trucker hats, bandanas, summer accessories, and summer silhouettes like boob tubes and halters. In fact, if you haven't already, maybe go watch my McBling video in preparation because it will give you a good background of some of the trends I'll be talking about here. Now that all that is covered, let's get into the aesthetic that brought the 2000s to the beach. Background The conception of the coconut girl actually originates from beach bunnies, a conception of 50s and 60s fun-loving summertime girls seen across films and television. While these girls were sometimes characterised by their love for beach activities and rebellious attitudes, misogynistic values of their time meant that they were mostly seen as viewing material for the beach, and surf groupies rather than surfers themselves. Forty or so years later, interest in the surfer lifestyle was growing in the 2000s. This lifestyle came about when surfing moved to professional touring in the 70s and became synonymous with the barefoot, free-spirited rejection of fast-paced urban life for a chilled out one amongst the waves. It has created its own laid-back look across each decade, and the look of the surfer life was defined in the 2000s by a rise in popular surfwear brands. These included Australia's Big Three, which were Billabong, Quicksilver, and Rip Curl, and American brands like Vulcan, Hurley, and O'Neill. Most of these were founded in the 70s, where their sponsorship of competition and successful business models made them the visual identifiers of the surfer lifestyle by the 2000s. In fact, a 2006 market report revealed that only about half of those purchasing surfwear were thought to be surfers, with the other half buying into the lifestyle. It was such a desirable lifestyle that these brands moved from surf brands to household fashion names during the 2000s and experienced phenomenal growth. Billabong, for example, reported a 76% revenue growth in 2001. For the Coconut Girl, the most iconic of these was actually the sister brand of Quicksilver, known as Roxy. First launched in 1990 to sell surfwear for women, by the 2000s Roxy had expanded to accessories, wetsuits and surf equipment, and had become one of the most valuable brands of the decade. The popularity of Roxy's casual, tropical and breezy style played a big part of the new conception of the beach bunny, now the 2000s Coconut Girl. She was seen in cultural conceptions of beach girls that began popping up in movies and televisions across the decade. And the infiltration of Roxy as primarily a sports surfing brand meant this new beach bunny was now often headstrong and athletic. But she was also seen in many other ways. The girl on summer vacation with her family, cue Mary Kate and Ashley movies. The local who lived and breathed the beach, the multitude of tween girl media about mermaids. Or the wealthy teenager who lived in paradise. Both a sporty surfer and a candy-coloured beach dweller, the coconut girl was always a visual symbol of joyful escape, and she represented everlasting summertime in a dreamlike world of youthful naivety and light, breezy femininity. Clothes. Before we get into specific items, let's look at the three main fashion influences of the coconut girl to deepen our understanding of the aesthetic. Firstly, the surfer brand influence on the look means that we're going to see sportswear items, particularly those associated with surfing. Secondly, the early to mid 2000s overall were heavily influenced by 70s silhouettes. I've covered this history in the McBling video, but what's interesting about how this applies to the coconut girl is that 70s female summer clothing often reflected the feminist movements of the era. More revealing clothing was seen as a symbol of female liberation, like halters and boob tubes and were perfect for light and breezy summer silhouettes that would be resurrected in the coconut girl aesthetic. And lastly, embodying the feelings of vacations and tropical travel, the aesthetic often appropriated other cultures that have been commodified for the tourism market. It's indigenous Hawaiian culture that appears the most in this aesthetic, whose incorporation into Western fashion began when Hawaii became a popular place for tourism following World War I. 
Components of Indigenous Hawaiian culture were then used to develop a beachy and summertime aesthetic for Western culture, and especially for the coconut girl. This combination of summer silhouettes, surf sportswear, and symbols of tropical living helped formulate the coconut girl as a light, carefree, and joyful summertime aesthetic. Fabrics and motifs. I want to start with a list of the fabrics and motifs because while there are some items that are unique to the coconut girl we'll be diving into, the coconut girl aesthetic mostly consists of general 2000 silhouettes with summer themes. One, hibiscus motifs. This was a major, major motif of the coconut girl aesthetic. It arises from the influence of tourism symbols, particularly from Hawaii. Here, the flower is worn by indigenous female Hawaiians to represent the romantic situation, almost like an engagement ring. When Hawaii became a popular holiday destination after World War I, the flower became a fashionable item of beachwear and a motif of surfer life by Westerners. For the coconut girl, the motif enhanced the femininity of the aesthetic. Two, retro summer textiles and patterns. These include crochet, tie-dye, abstract maximalist patterns, and terry cloth, all associated with light and breezy summertime ensembles. They also all came to be popular in Western fashion in the 60s and 70s, to go along with sunny and free-spirited hippie aesthetics. For abstract maximalist patterns, they were usually pastel or candy-coloured with floral patterns, and it's quite possible that the popularity of the terry cloth fabric was due to the rise in popularity of the juicy tracksuit. 3. Airbrush motifs, particularly on t-shirts. They made a comeback in the 2000s, inspired by graffiti trends that had been incorporated into hip-hop styles. They were usually a cheap souvenir from a summer vacation, and so are perfect for the coconut girl. 4. The colour palette. The aesthetic mostly stayed within the colour palette of pastels and candy colours. Essentially, colours that evoke a youthful feeling of dreamy summer times and tropical landscapes. Okay, now let's take a look at specific items. Tops. To begin, bikinis are probably the most iconic top of the coconut girl aesthetic, being a direct symbol of summertime and vacation wear. They were introduced to Western fashion in the 40s and were often seen as scandalous. It wasn't until the 50s and 60s, after being seen on actresses and photo shoots and movies, that they became mainstream and have been a symbol of liberated female clothing and beach femininity ever since. For the 2000s, popular silhouettes included sturdy sports styles in the early 2000s, feminine butterfly styles and halters that came from the center in the mid 2000s, and typical triangle styles that were popular throughout. Then there were rash guard tops, which were designed for surfing as a protective item from sun exposure and rashes from the surfboard, but became synonymous with the coconut girl when popular surfer brands began producing them for the female surfer. Bandana style tops were another big trend of early 2000s summer looks, suiting the relaxed and breezy coconut girl. Halter tops coming from the center were another massive, massive coconut girl trend, seen in many other garments as well as tops. Put your arms through, Put your arms through them. Mm. Oh. Wow. wow! Spaghetti straps were also fundamental to the coconut girl. The spaghetti strap has historically been considered a style of female liberation since the flappers in the 20s, revealing parts of women once covered up for modesty, like the back and shoulders. The liberated silhouette was perfect for hot weather and became a massive part of the 2000 summer look. I'll also point out that halter, boob tubes, and crop style tops that I covered in the McBling video were essential to this aesthetic, being liberated summer silhouettes. And last, but definitely not least, as we moved into the mid-2000s, baby doll tops became a dominant part of the aesthetic. Originally a type of free-falling negligee, it consists of a bra shape at the top, followed by falling fabric. After being seen in the 90s as part of the kinder whore aesthetic, the silhouette was adopted for the mid-2000s coconut girl in bright tops and dresses. Skirts and dresses. Aside from the mini hemline craze of the 2000s, which I covered in the McBling video, and was a perfect summer hemline and therefore super popular in the aesthetic, sarongs are the most iconic coconut girl skirt. They originated as tube skirts from Indonesia and Southeast Asian cultures, and were worn for a variety of different purposes, including casual wear and religious significance. This sarong bears little resemblance to the sarongs appropriated for Hollywood in the 40s and 50s. Here, it became a wrap that emphasized rather than concealed the hips becoming a more sexualized female item. Since then, they have remained a popular piece of beachwear in the Western world and were particularly loved by the 2000s coconut girl. Long peasant skirts could also sometimes be seen in the aesthetic, particularly towards the mid 2000s. I'm gonna cover their history later when I look at the boho chic aesthetic of the 2000s, but for the coconut girl, they created a lighthearted and breezy flowing style. 
In terms of dresses, the most popular was probably a spaghetti strap dress, especially if it was covered in hibiscus motifs, followed by halter dresses and handkerchief hems in both skirts and dresses. In the mid-2000s, bright coloured kaftans became a big summer trend. The kaftan is an ancient item worn for thousands of years, predominantly in areas of hot climates. The coconut girl silhouette took most of its inspiration from the Moroccan kaftan, that was often seen on Moroccan royalty in the 13th century, and is still worn in Morocco today. It was appropriated in the West for hippie styles of the 60s and 70s, and created a bohemian beach style for the coconut girls in the mid-2000s, in both dresses and tops. Shorts. To begin, there were denim mini shorts. Mini shorts have been a part of women's leisure wear since the 40s and 50s, often being associated with female liberation. In the 70s, the mini denim short was iconized by Daisy Duke, and thus they were a perfect item for the 2000s coconut girl, who was influenced by 70s trends and loved a liberated look. But more essential to a coconut girl's ensemble are board shorts. Hainori Nye, a Hawaiian tailor, first made heavy cotton and canvas swimming shorts for surfers in the 50s. Then in the late 60s, the first round of nylon board shorts that are similar to what we know today were launched by Quicksilver. They were seen as better for surfing performance and became well known at surfing competitions from the 70s onwards. By the 2000s, female surfers had adopted the item and they became a fashionable sportswear item for the beach, particularly when placed in a short hemline, from popular surfer brands like Roxy, or were covered in a tropical hibiscus print. Accessories. Jewelry. An iconic accessory of the coconut girl aesthetic are shell necklaces and bracelets, particularly the puka shell. The shell comes from beaches in Hawaii and is sometimes considered a sacred shell to indigenous Hawaiians. The shell on a necklace has been a tourist item since the 60s, but it was seen on many celebrities in the 70s and became a highly sought after fashion item of surf culture. They came back into style as part of the 2000s to 70s and were worn by all genders and are a pretty essential component of the 2000s coconut girl aesthetic. Additionally, there were single large shell pendants, usually mother of pearl, and they were another symbol of beach life and a tourist item from vacation. Beaded necklaces that sat high up on the neck, sometimes as a choker, were also popular, and quintessentially coconut girl are foot decorations, especially ankle bracelets and toe rings. These have been worn for over 8,000 years by girls in South Asia and Egypt, and are still commonly worn today across these cultures. For the 2000s coconut girl, foot decorations were perfect for summer places that encouraged barefoot living. For the mid-2000s coconut girl, there were chunky bangles, often stacked on top of the other. I'll be taking a closer look at these in the boho chic aesthetic video later, but essentially they created a carefree bohemian style that suited the breezy coconut girl. Rubber watches can also be seen in the aesthetic, including the candy-coloured baby G's I covered in the Y2K video, and kid-like jewellery that resembled vacation souvenirs, such as cheap plastic jewels, lip gloss rings, and friendship bracelets. Temporary glitter tattoos. An item that the coconut girl could have picked up at any souvenir shop, the temporary sparkly tattoo has a special place in the aesthetic. The most iconic for this aesthetic is the dolphin or the hibiscus. Hats. The most important hat of the coconut girl is the bucket hat. It was traditionally worn by farmers and fishermen for rain protection, but became a part of fashion mostly through the success of the kangal. While I'll cover the history of these in the later video on hip hop styles and the golden age, it's good to understand the roots of this coconut girl trend came from 80s and 90s hip hop styles that brought the hat to streetwear and made it fashionable, especially with 2000s summer girls. And then a trend of the aesthetic not usually talked about are visors. Sports visors played a big part in 2000s fashion, and for the coconut girl were ideal for hot climates and representative of their athletic style. Shoes. Chunky platform shoes were a dominant style amongst coconut girls. I've covered the platform history in the Y2K video, but the coconut girl wore them mostly in platform flip-flops and the popular platform slide-on. They were considered ultra trendy, hot climate appropriate, and just casual enough for surfer style. Non-platform flip-flops were also a big part of this aesthetic, and none were more iconic to the 2000s than the Havianas. Their history begins when American soldiers brought back Japanese Zoris from the Second World War. The style then became extremely popular in Western culture, and by the 60s was a quintessential item of unisex beach style. Then the first Havianas flip-flop was launched in 1962 in Brazil. They later went global in the 2000s by launching a mass media campaign that made them a household name across the world. Hundreds and hundreds of different styles, all in the same rubber silhouette with the iconic geometric band, made the simplest shoe design feel like a fashion statement. Havianas were so popular they could be seen up and down beaches in the 2000s. 
and even in normal everyday wear too. Hair and beauty. The Coconut Girls' love for natural environments meant light and simple styles were essential for hair and beauty. Breezy beach waves that came straight from the ocean and dried in the sun are the epitome of Coconut Girl hair, instantly connecting the Coconut Girl with the surfer lifestyle and a carefree summer. Free-spirited and breezy hippie styles could also be seen, such as two pieces of hair pulled back to the side and two braids beside the face. As we moved into the mid-2000s, low side ponytails were big in the aesthetic, which were reviving the side ponytails from the 80s. However, more important than any hairstyle for the coconut girl aesthetic were hair accessories. Hibiscus flowers worn in the hair were vital, and as we already know, were mostly appropriated from indigenous Hawaiian romantic practices. For the coconut girl, they could be picked up at any souvenir shop and became quintessential to the summer vacation look. Kids' hair accessories, like clips with bright colors, were also sometimes seen, and falling into the tourist trap of getting an overpriced hair wrap on your vacation was a rite of passage for any coconut girl. It's not clear where the style originates, but it strikes me as similar to African beaded hair, especially because they often included beads. This is a practice thousands of years old across many African cultures, sometimes symbolizing wealth, status, spiritual rituals, and fertility. While many African hair customs were prohibited for black people during their enslavement in America, after the civil rights movement in the 60s, beads were incorporated into black hair as a celebration of African heritage, and were then seen again particularly in the 90s and 2000s. It's therefore highly likely the rap hair craze was using elements of popular decorative black hair of its time. For Coconut Girl Beauty, natural, sun-kissed, and minimalist makeup was its defining look. This essentially means no makeup, however certain broader 2000s trends like lip gloss were sometimes incorporated into the style. Sun healing products like lip balm, particularly lip smackers, were a cult item of the 90s and 2000s, reviving a popular 70s product. Brown skin was also a big trend, which often resulted in tanning oil being used, extra points if it smelt like coconuts. Finally, fresh 2000s summer scents became a big beauty trend for the coconut girl. In particular, lots of Ralph Lauren fragrances like Blue, Ralph and Cool, Roxy perfumes and Davidoff Cool Water for women. Other visual cues. Surf brands. As we've already learned, the popularity of surf brands was hugely responsible for the rise in the aesthetic. Their styles and logos are therefore iconic visual cues, and their popularity meant wearing them in day-to-day -day life, not just at the beach, was normalized during the 2000s. Television and film. For prime examples of the Coconut Girl aesthetic, you can take a look at some of the films and television that informed it during the 2000s. Movies like Blue Crush, Our Lips Are Sealed, Holiday in the Sun, Aquamarine, Love Wrecked, and Into the Blue. And television like The O.C., Laguna Beach, Surf Girls, Paradise Hotel, H2O Just Add Water, Blue Water High, Summerland, and Maui Fever. The Decline. The coconut girl look began declining around the same time as the McBling aesthetic, and mostly for the same reasons. Economic hardships and troubled times of the Great Recession that occurred at the end of 2007 made light and joyful aesthetics seem completely out of touch. We now wanted realism and muted tones, which defined the later aesthetics of the 2000s. As we look back, it's very easy to romanticize the candy-colored coconut girl, but aesthetics usually come with their flaws. I feel like the main one here is its use of indigenous Hawaiian culture that was commodified for tourism. Indigenous Hawaiian culture has long been sold by the tourism industry to the Western market. While the industry has often simultaneously been indifferent to some negative consequences for this culture. For example, the industry is largely responsible for the environmental destruction of indigenous land, natural environments, and the rise of cost of living on the island, which is contributing to an ongoing housing crisis that disproportionately affects indigenous Hawaiians. So it could also be argued that the coconut girl's use of their motif symbolizes the exploitation of indigenous Hawaiian culture for Western profit. Now, this is a really complicated issue and there's lots of different opinions on it and this video really doesn't do it justice, but it does pour some needed rain on the dreamy paradise world the coconut girl represented for so many of our childhoods. Understanding aesthetics flaws deepens our understanding of them as a whole, which is necessary for mindful practice of them. And I do think that the casual and versatile styles of the coconut girl gives so much room for a more conscious aesthetic. And then maybe the coconut girl can be what she promised. The fresh breeze of our 2000s memoir and everlasting feelings of summertime. What do you think about the coconut girl aesthetic? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.